this is Preeti from Analytics India magazine and in today's episode we will be talking about how to become a data analyst in 2020 along with the prerequisites to be one. So let's get started. Starting with what does a data analyst actually do? Data analyst translates numbers, trends and trajectories into digestible and accessible information. Businesses usually collect data such as sales figures, inventories, profit margins, transportation costs. A data analyst's job is to take that data and use it to make better business decisions. Often the main goal of a data analyst is to solve issues that cost the company money or help them making decisions in expanding the business. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the prerequisites required to being one. Coming to the first one and the most common in almost all data science roles, programming language. In simple terms, data science is all about finding logic and patterns underneath a mountain of data. Sieving through this mountain to collect data is not possible by human labor. Hence, we turn to powerful computers to help us create patterns in data. But even computers cannot function on their own and they require input in the form of a language or a code to perform the act accordingly. These set of instructions are given to the computers with the help of a piece of code written in high level language. At present, the most powerful and advanced languages to design models for data science and deal with the sophisticated level of statistics involved in data science include Python, R, RStudio, Java, SQL, MATLAB, etc. Amongst these languages, the most popular among data analysts is Python, owning to its dynamic behavior and a wide range of powerful libraries that do even the most complex of calculations in a jiffy. Coming to the next one, stats and aptitude. Data science is designing models and writing codes later, but maths, numbers and logical reasoning first. The thing with data science projects is that all of them are unique in their own way and the purpose of every single one of them is distinct too, which means that for the same data set, two different projects need two different approaches and it is to look at things with a different perspective, a data analyst needs to constantly think out of the box, which can be made possible only when the brain has been trained to think that way. Coming to the next one, database. Data is stored in databases or data centers as per the current technological needs. And to continuously deal with such large sets of data, a data analyst needs to have the basic concepts of database management on his fingertips. To work and communicate with the given data, a data analyst needs to be proficient in some database language such as SQL, NoSQL, Swift, etc. and carry out the desired analytics required. Another reason why data analysts need to be excellent with databases is that continuous fetching and modification of data and subsequently having to write the changes to the physical database is both time consuming as well as energy consuming. Moving on, machine learning, deep learning and AI. Machine learning may be considered as a subset of data science. As its name suggests, machine learning is about machines learning something. This learning of theirs is again made possible by code written in programming languages. And if the design model works the way it is supposed to, it can make your task easier, more efficient and more accurate than big data and cloud solutions. Coming to the next one, data visualization. Once the project has been completed with the help of models and the algorithms have been used, you still have to make sure that your shareholders and your clients understand the results and findings of your work. But sometimes your shareholders might not be familiar with analytics and they do not understand what your model means or what your code is trying to convey. They can only understand the results if it is conveyed in a human readable format. This is where data visualization comes in. Using tools such as Excel, data analyst needs to display the conclusion of the project in the form of bar graphs, pie charts, etc. in an accessible format to understand the trends and patterns identified in the data. Coming to the next one, data munging. Before a data analyst can start with his work, there is a major job to be accomplished before. The data on which analytics has to be done is not only very large, but it also random and lacks a lot of structure in the same. These two factors make reading and understanding the language more difficult than it already is. Putting this raw data in a format with the intent of making it more valuable is what is called data munging. 
And with that, we come to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Analytics India magazine and follow this segment for everything related to data science as a career. See you soon. Bye.